Hi everyone and welcome to the IBM Events mobile app tutorial. We are going to log right here into our uh, mobile app. I'll be using an iOS device for the purposes of this demo, but the feature set is such uh, that most of the features should also translate over to Android. We're going to start by downloading the app itself, and to do that you're going to go to your device's app store and search for IBM Events uh, directly within uh, your app store itself. And when you search, it's going to pull up a list of different events. IBM Events, the black uh, icon uh, with the 8 bar should appear up front. Uh, note that is not IBM Event Connect. IBM MEA events or IBM Live by TouchScope or the Event Agenda Portal, it should be the first uh, one for you, but if it is not, you're looking for IBM events. I've already downloaded the app, but uh, coming back to it, once it is downloaded here on your home screen, you're going to bring up that black bar icon once again. You can see for me, it's right between my fitness pal and Strava, and I'm going to pull it up right here, and I'm going to get hit with a list of different events. Um, because we do do this for quite a few different events. But what's so great about the app is that it allows you to custom skin each event. So each event has a unique look and feel. So we're going to go into Vision, which is the very first entry here. And then we're going to get prompted with a login set. We're going to log in again, as we mentioned off the top of the call, uh, with your registration email address. And then for your password, you're going to use your registration confirmation number, uh, which is six digits, uh, case sensitive, and uh, of course, uh, usually alphanumeric, but we do see quite a few that are simply alpha. Um, so by logging right into uh, the mobile app, this is going to bring us into Vision, um, and it's going to start with your profile. Uh, and this is where we're going to start today's call. Um, here in your profile, you'll obviously see it's got a just a, a simple TC for my name, and then we can go ahead and view my profile and then edit. I can change my name, I can talk a little bit more about who I am, I can say I'm a digital strategist here at IBM, and then I can add a profile. Uh, this is gonna allow me to do two things. I can import it directly from LinkedIn using the LinkedIn API, or I can choose from my photo, um, my photo album as well. So you can, uh, of course, go in and add all of that information manually. Um, once you're done, you can save that and then your profile is filled out. Then you just want to make sure that you allow direct messages from other attendees and opt into the attendee networking features. These will all be available right on the settings bar uh, directly. Uh, it's this cog in the upper right in my profile. You don't have to opt in for any of these, but these do make the event app much more uh, robust. Uh, by opting in for the attendee list and showing yourself in the attendee list, you'll be able to connect with other attendees and send direct messages. Also, you'll want to uh, enable your location alerts uh, for the event app itself. Uh, this is going to be really helpful uh, when we do some of our beacon messaging that we're deploying here at the event, which we'll get into just a little bit later. So once we have our uh, profile filled out, you'll also notice that your inbox will be right here. So if anybody sends you any messages, it'll live right here. Uh, and then once we have our profile set, we're gonna wanna go in and start building our schedule. This is what we're here for, right? This is the kind of primary means by which we're using this app. So we're gonna go ahead and click the schedule button under event guide. And the schedule is going to bring up everything happening. Monday for the business partner stuff, and then once again, getting into Tuesday, all of the session information. And we can do this a couple of different ways. Uh, one, if I just want to quick add any sessions going on, let's say I just wanna add a general session, uh, and then add a session at 10 o'clock, uh, and then scroll down and add something in 11.15, it'll allow me to do that. But let's say I don't know what this title really means for me and I wanna get into it a little bit more. I can click into that session and it's going to bring me the session ID, uh, more information on it, the location of it, so the room that it's gonna be happening in, happening in, and then it's gonna give me information about all of the different speakers who are speaking in this session. So for the general session, uh, I'll be able to click in and learn a little bit more about who's speaking. We all know who Alistair Rennie is, but if we're a client and maybe we're a little bit removed from the structure of IBM, we can go ahead and we can click into Alistair's profile and we can see very quickly, he's the general manager for solutions at IBM Analytics. All of this information coming in directly uh, from our event management system. 
I can choose to add him to my favorites, and we'll go into where that ends up later um, if I'm interested in more about what he's doing and see any sessions that he is speaking in. It'll bring up a brief bio of Alistair, and I'll be able to see all the information about him. And if he's included a Twitter page or any other social links, I'll be able to go and follow him directly from there. So if I click over to Alistair's profile, I can see any of the tweets that he's tweeting out. That's just a small vignette into what the speaker details uh, can include. So I can check all the speakers. Uh, then in addition to that, check out a description of the session itself. Uh, and then enter any notes that I want uh, to add while I'm in the session. So if you happen to be there, you can write a little bit more about what you hear. Maybe there's a new Cognos offering that you didn't know about that you want to learn more about. You can write it in and then email it to yourself here in the notes section. In addition, if you're interested in sharing the session socially, uh, you can click this upper right button and you can choose to share via Twitter, Facebook, uh, SMS, or email. So you can email that session to somebody else. One big ask that we get from a lot of people is they want to add it to their personal calendar rather than just their app calendar. So there's also a personal calendar option as well. You're going to want to make sure that you allow access to the calendar, click OK, and then add it to your personal calendar. And if you want to set a reminder, you can set a reminder and then click done. So this is going to make it appear on your device calendar, uh, which is really helpful if you're balancing some executive one-on-one -on -one meetings, maybe some personal appointments that you have to take in addition to anything else that might pop up on your calendar. The key with this, if you want it to get it to sync to your notes calendar though, is you're gonna to need to go into your settings, mail contacts and calendars, uh, and then you're going to want to select uh, that Connections Cloud as your default calendar, or it will save to your iCloud calendar. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions about that, you can reach out to me. It's a very common uh, setting that just needs to get flipped on for people to add it to their personal uh, agenda. So once we've added all of these uh, sessions, your big question next might be, uh, where do these all end up? I've added them, they've got a, an orange plus, but they're kind of still all over the place. Uh, we can go back into the menu using that upper left hamburger um, and go into my schedule. And then anything that you've added is going to appear right in one row. So you can keep everything in one nice, easy place. And again, if you want to add the personal calendar, it becomes a right hand add here just to add to your personal calendar. And it's very easy. In addition, if you remember, we added Alistair Rennie to this uh, to our, speak, our favorite speaker list, and he'll appear in one place. You can also favorite attendees, exhibitors, and different venues, and we'll get into some of those situations in just a minute. One of the other big areas that people like to, uh, to use this app for, and one of the primary reasons we do use it, um, is that we want to enroll for labs here, and labs are obviously a limited enrollment session. So any labs that you see, you'll want, uh, you will have a, an enrollment required uh, text in the upper right. So once you're ready to add a lab to your schedule, you're going to click that plus button and then you're going to get hit with a prompt. It's going to, one, uh, let you know that you've added something else and you can't uh, have any conflicting sessions on your schedule. So you can proceed to enroll in a lab. And then when you click that enrollment required uh, button, uh, it's going to go ahead and make a call out to our event management system to make sure there's a seat for you. And then uh, if you are enrolled, um, it'll tell you that you are successful. Uh, or it'll tell you you've been waitlisted if the room is full, or if the waitlist is full, it'll tell you that you could not be added. Uh, so you'll always get that message on labs as well. The next thing you might want to know is how to filter through all of these sessions. We have more than 250 sessions here at Vision today, uh, or at least this year. They uh, span multiple days, multiple subjects, uh, multiple industry types. Um, so we're going to want to filter those uh, in, a different way, in a few different ways. Let's say, for instance, I'm here for Cognos. Uh, I can go into this upper right hourglass. You can see it in the upper right here. And then just click to search for any venues, uh, events, more, a title. It's going to do a text search across the entire event management system. And I can pull up any Cognos sessions that might be there. There's obviously going to be quite a few of them. Um, and if I'm looking for something a little bit more tailored and defined, on the bottom right, uh, there's a filter function. And this allows us to choose by just about any pivotable category and multiple categories um, that you can have. So you can swi swipe into uh, maybe BP Summit sessions, uh, the core curriculum, and just look for uh, FOPM sessions versus GRC versus SPM stuff. Um, and you can just select into those uh, and then just go ahead and click search and it's going to pull up any sessions that happen to be uh, of that different ilk 
um, at the time. And then to reset our filters, if we've gone too far, you can just click that reset button. In addition to the uh, core curriculum categories, you can search by industry. Uh, so you see we have a bunch of different industries that come through for vision, uh, your different level, whether it's advanced, intermediate, introductory, um, you can search by that. Um, any session types as well um, that you might see coming through. Um, so there are a bunch of different pivotable search uh, categories that you can go. And of course, if you're ever stuck or you know uh, the name of the speaker you're here to see, you could just go ahead and type in a name. Speaking of speakers, uh, if you're interested in learning more about all of the speakers, we keep them in one place. Um, they're going to be right here in the speaker section of the menu. And through here, you can find any of the speakers speaking at IBM Vision. And then by clicking into them, uh, seeing any of the sessions they might be in, um, and then add them to your favorites so that you can go ahead and follow what it is they're doing. And that social searchability is also available uh, through any entity within the app, whether it be um, a session, an exhibitor, or a speaker. In addition to this, we offer an exhibitor portal, so all of the exhibitors in the mobile app are going to appear into one place, uh, so we can see all of the different exhibitors, and then if we've gotten a logo and a description for them in a website, uh, we can include all of that information for the exhibitors themselves. So all exhibitors, and you can go ahead uh, and add exhibitors as well. Getting into some of the more social sharing options uh, regarding the conference and uh, how to network with other users, there's a couple of options. You can go into the attendee list, uh, and if any attendees have already logged in, and we see we've had quite a few people download and log in here, uh, we can go in and add attendees. We can go ahead and see other people, so if I make a connection with somebody, uh, maybe there's somebody who I meet who I didn't have a business card for, I can just easily find them in the app and then add them. And then any, any of their personal information, I can choose to uh, send them a direct message. So for instance, if uh, Sylvana here, I, I hadn't known her before, which I obviously do, uh, if I remember her and I you know, say, oh, we wanted to connect on something, I could send her a message directly from within this attendee feed, uh, which is great. And I can also add her to my favorites so I can go ahead and find her later. The other really cool opportunity we're going to have right on site is in the networking lounge uh, that we'll have right outside of the uh, Bonnet Creek Ballroom. Uh, we're going to have what's called the Around Me function. And what this is going to do is actually find users who have their Bluetooth on as well um, who might be nearby. Um, so if you're in a room with 25 people and you might be looking for somebody or you, you're trying to make connections or meet somebody, you can see who else is in the room. Again, total opt-in. Um, so from a privacy standpoint, if you're not interested in being displayed, you don't have to. In addition, once our tagging feature comes, which should be in our next release, um, you can go ahead and add tags to yourself so that you can find people who might match uh, some of your other, um, some of your interests. So if you want to add TM1 or analytics or any of this information, you can uh, match up with people. The activity stream allows you to post anything um, and everything that you might want subject to the different rules that we might have uh, at the conference. We do have a set of social guidelines. Uh, you can click post uh, and I can type anything that I want. So I can say something to the effect of, so excited for IBM Vision. And then if I publish it, it basically becomes a small social feed. And at Interconnect, we saw this take off in a huge way. Speakers can promote their sessions. Attendees can share what they're up to and how much fun they're having. And you can comment on other people's statuses as well. Um, so this is a great way to get social at the event. In addition, all of our external social, ch social channels are available directly from within the app as well. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, our Tumblr, uh, the website for analytics, and uh, the blog that we use. So just clicking into Twitter, um, we can find any hashtags that might uh, be available as well. Then in IBM Go, uh, if you are not familiar with IBM Go, this is where you're going to go to get all of your streaming sessions for the conference. And we've linked IBM Go directly into the mobile app. So after the event, or if you can't make the event, or you couldn't make a session because you're double booked, you can go ahead and log in and see some of the videos that you missed as well. For an overall view of everything going on, the daily highlight section is going to be a great resource for you. You can see all of the information uh, just in one nice, easy place, along with some of the um, exhibitors that we might have, um, and in addition to that, conference details. Uh, one of the biggest helps that, that we can have here is that in the conference details, um, 
we are we have all of the information about the event. Anything that would end up in the newspaper is going to go here. We work directly with the newspaper team. Um, so all of this information is going to go right in one place. So for special events, we're going to have the Monday reception, uh, the, Wednesday, the Tuesday or Wednesday special event, internet and wireless info. It all lives in one place here. So it almost serves as a pocket guide for the event itself. So that's a general overview of the app itself. I'm sure there are plenty of questions. Um, for this reason, and just because uh, we're recording directly through the meeting stream itself, I'm going to open the meeting room to questions. So if you do have a question, uh, I'm following the meeting stream, and I would encourage you to post a comment within there, and I can take you through um, any of the answers that we might have. So I'm going to pause. We have 10 minutes left in, the, in this call, um, and I will open it up for questions. So uh, the line will be open, and as questions come in, I can answer them. All right, folks, we seem to have a, a few shy people on the meeting stream, so I have opened up the uh, call uh, to audio-enabled users who maybe don't have the meeting, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Again, we have eight minutes left in this call, uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to chime in here. Hey, Ted, this is Olivia in Analyst Relations. How are you today? Great. How are you, Cynthia? Great. There's a couple ways that you can do this, um, and that's a fantastic question. So you can go into your schedule, and the presumed theory is that a user would add any sessions to their schedule that they were interested in grabbing the presentation for. Uh, so in this hands-on lab, for instance, once we're in, uh, if the speaker consents to using um, their session or their session presentation after there will be a link field that appears automatically within here that is going to render that PDF link and then it'll click out and you'll be able to grab the PDF from there. In addition to that IBM Go will offer a uh, PDF database uh, within an iframe uh, where you can search for any and all presentations that are available. So to recap that uh, any available speaker presentations will appear directly within the session details uh, and ibmgo.com will have a resource for you to grab any presentations that you want. Another couple of minutes while we wait for any questions that we might have to come in. Uh, on your notification area here in the My Event section of the mobile app, this is where any notifications that we, the conference team, might send to you uh, will end up. Uh, we send a few notifications. Uh, one of them is going to be about conference presentations, letting you know they're available in the location to go. Uh, any emergency information that we may need to post to attendees, uh, special session changes, any uh, change of plans that we may need to communicate will come in via direct message. Uh, if you've enabled push notifications, which I strongly recommend for the app, uh, this is where they will land in the notification section. I'd also like to spend a moment talking about beacon messaging, which is something we will be using uh, at IBM Vision. By enabling Bluetooth on your phone and, uh, and enabling location services within the app, uh, we're going to be dropping sensors uh, throughout uh, the Bonnet Creek, both in session rooms uh, and hallways. So as you uh, pass by areas, it's going to give you a unique opportunity to interact with your environment. Uh, it'll serve special offers um, and, uh, and links to you. Uh, if there's something special going on, uh, maybe you're wondering where the uh, where the meals are uh, and you're in the wrong place, we can try to point you to the right place from there. Uh, and in addition, uh, iBeacons are going to point are going to facilitate the around me section uh, of the attendee search function. So once again, going into around me, uh, you'll be able to see people nearby who you can connect with uh, directly through uh, the mobile app. So look forward to some really cool stuff regarding iBeacons here at the event itself. Yeah. Um, I have a question. I'm trying to find the, the location and settings where you change um, the ability to add it to your notes calendar, but I'm not seeing that anywhere. Can you show where that is? Sure. It's a little bit of a labyrinth, so I'm going to take you through on my personal device. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah. All right. So we're going to go home, and then we're going to go into the settings function of our app. Then we're going to do a quick search for mail. Sorry, uh, there should be a mail contacts and calendar section. And it's the first one right after iCloud, iTunes and App Store and Wallet and Apple Pay. 
So if I go into Mail, Contacts, and Calendars, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of this section. So again, we're going to bypass Accounts, bypass Mail, bypass Contacts, and bypass Calendars all the way to the second to the last entry, which again, is so, uh, so silly, um, where there should be a default calendar view. And if your Notes calendar is synced, um, onto your phone, this is where you'll select it. So you can select your personal note or personal calendar, or if you have an iCloud account or uh, your Connections Cloud account. Were you able to find it that way? Yeah, yeah, I did find it there. It just, I, I added it on the app, but it doesn't seem to show up, but I'll, I'll keep playing with it and see. Interesting. Let me see if this makes it through. It probably will take a minute to sync with your desktop device, but it should be adding directly to your calendar. So let me make sure that any of my information, let me do a quick test really quick. That's certainly an interesting one. It doesn't seem to be adding for mine either. So I will log that and check into it. Okay, sounds good, thanks. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for attending. If you have any questions, you can ping me once I'm off uh, DND. I will also be posting this meeting along uh, with the recording itself. And uh, with any luck, some small snippets on how to take some individual actions uh, within the app that are nice and, and snackable uh, one-minute videos. Uh, but thank you so much for joining, and we hope that this app really helps you on your journey in Vision 2016. Thank you.